Hello learners, today we will study about teaching learning process and methods. As there are thousands of teachers and in the same way thousands of methods. That is why I said a thousand teachers, a thousand methods. First of all, we will talk about what is teaching. Teaching is basically a process of interacting. The process of engaging students in activities that will enable them to acquire the knowledge, skills, as well as worthwhile values and attitudes. Good teaching is basically one that is well planned and where activities are interrelated to each other. Good teaching goes beyond recall of information. Good teaching is one that provides learning experiences or situation that will ensure understanding, application and critical thinking. Basically, Good teaching is one where the learner is stimulated to think, reason and apply. Now we will discuss about principles of teaching. First one is principle of using previous knowledge. Before proceeding to any new topic, we always use previous knowledge, the basic knowledge. Then principle of providing for individual difference, a good teacher always keeps in mind the individual differences and on the basis of that the teacher applies the method. Principle of readiness. Teacher as well as student both should be physically and mentally ready. Principle of definite specific objectives of the lesson. Every lesson have a specific objective and that is to be achieved by the teacher. It means there are predecided goals to be achieved. Principle of meaningfulness, if the learning material is not meaningful that can be retained, that can't be transferred. So meaningfulness is required. Principle of proceeding from simple to complex, it's always wise to use the principle of proceeding from simple to complex to comprehend the topic. Principle of proceeding from concrete to abstract. Principle of proceeding from general to specific, principle of proceeding from known to unknown. These all principles create our base to use which kind of method will be applied. Now what is teaching approach? Teaching approach is a set of principles, beliefs or ideas about the nature of learning which is translated into the classroom. Teaching process includes three phases. First one is plan, then implement, then evaluate. After evalu we do evaluation with the help of feedbacks and then we replan the things. Now planning phase includes decision like the needs of the learner, the achievable goals and objectives to meet the needs, selection of the content to be taught, motivation to carry out the goal, approach most fit to carry out the goals, evaluation process to measure learning outcome. Implementation phase, it is basically based on the objective. Implementation means to put into the action different activities in order to achieve the objectives through the subject matter. Interaction of the teacher and learner is important in the accomplishment of the plan. In it, we use different teaching styles and strategies then third is evaluation phase. A match of the objectives with the learning outcomes will be made. Answers the questions if the plans and implementation have been successfully achieved and then feedback is done. Teaching is basically divided into three stages, pre-active stage, interactive stage and post-active stage. In pre-active stage, we fix up the goals, we decide which content matter is to be taken, then we decide which kind of strategies will be applied. In interactive stage, we diagnose the need of the learners, then we act according to that and reactions come according to our actions. In post-active stage, the things which have been taught are tested through evaluation, devices are used and then feedback and testing is done. In this way, teaching is divided into three stages. Now what are guiding principles in the selection and use of teaching strategies? Let's have a look. 
As learning is an active process, we have to actively engage the learners in learning activities if we want them to learn what we intend to teach. Researches show 75% retention rates in learning by doing, while 90% retention rates learning by teaching others. The more senses that are involved in learning, the more and the better the hearing. Maximum of sight and hearing contain 88% and they make our learning better. Otherwise, all the five senses are used. Now, different kind of teaching learning approaches can be seen. Teacher centered, learner centered, subject matter centered, learning centered, teacher dominated, interactive, banking approach, constructivist approach, disciplinal, integrated, individualistic, collaborative, indirect or guided and direct. Now, we will discuss about teacher centered methods. Teacher centered methods are expository in nature. These are easier to implement than student centered activities. Teacher centered methods can be divided in following pattern, teacher talk or lecturing, demonstration, assignments and homework, memorizing, reviewing, questioning and discussion. First one is teacher talk or lecturing. If the traditional lecture method of chalk and talk with the teacher talking and pupils taking notes in the is the idea of teaching for you, then you will find yourself with an unreasonable amount of classroom management problems as now this method has also gone under many changes. Teacher talk or lecturing is basically direct instruction or it is known as teacher centered instruction where teacher is the primary communicator of the knowledge. In it, teacher directly manages the pace and sequence of instruction. It includes listening to students in formal way or talking with students with in informal way. Second one is demonstration. Demonstration is a methodology liked by students. Students are actively engaged in the learning activity. They love demonstration method. What are the purposes of demonstration method? It grabs attention of students, students vicariously participates, reduces safety hazards, it saves times and resources, it reviews theory, it illustrates or models. Third is assignments and homework. Practice should be incorporated into the instructional sequence as either an in-class assignment and or an out of class assignment that is homework. Fourth one is memorizing. Sometimes student must memorize things even without much understanding like alphabets in language, numbering system in mathematics, common element symbols in chemistry. Fifth is reviewing. In general, reviewing is a positive and necessary practice. Through it, recall is improved, understanding is improved by strengthening semantic networks. Review is always profitable. It helps to unify concepts. It helps students see the big picture. It helps strengthen semantic network. Review should not be used solely as preparation for an exam. Next is questioning. Questioning is one of the easiest way to convert instruction from a passive to active learning experience, but it must be planned and purposeful. Well-formed questions help students develop their critical thinking skills. Questioning provides an opportunity for students to elaborate and adjust their responses based on their interaction with the teacher and the other students as well as to put forth unique insights. Next is discussion. Leading an effective discussion can be one of the most difficult tasks of teaching. It requires a commitment to a shared dialogue with the students and great restraint by the teacher, who naturally wants to work through his or her planned lesson. Teaching as a process of learning. 
to teach is to make someone to learn. For this, we have to see the basic levels of learning. The levels of learning are divided into four parts, rote, understanding, application and correlation. Basically, the level of learning first one is rote. In it, the, the ability to repeat something without understanding the concept is there. While in understanding, the person tries to comprehend or grab the meaning of the of something and in application the act of putting something to use the thing which has been learnt or understood. Correlation in it something is put for applying with the help of subsequent previous knowledge. Now we will talk about learner centered approach. In learner centered approach, learner is the main focus in the learning process. Learner learns primarily because of what they bring in terms of their perceived needs, motivation, past experiences, background knowledge, interests and creative skills to their classroom experiences. Teachers are perceived as facilitators, helpers and resources and their role becomes decentralized. Here, the main focus is on the learner. Now, what are the principles of learners? Learner centered method, let us have a look. The learner has full responsibility for her or his learning. Second is involvement and participation on the part of learner is very necessary. The relationship between learners are more equal promoting growth and development. The learner confluence in his education. The learner sees himself or herself differently as a result of the learning experience. Now we will discuss about the features of learner centered learning. First one is ask, do not tell. As a teacher, one should always try to elicit the information, ideas and answers from the students. The students are empty vessels waiting to be filled by all knowing teachers. The more they contribute, the more they are likely to remember. We should never underestimate the abilities of students. Focus on students' experience and interests. By keeping in view the interest and inclination and relating with personal lives and experiences. The students are more likely to become involved in the lesson, thereby remembering more. Next point is learning by doing or participation. The more the students are actively involved, the chances of their own learning enhance. The more they are likely to remember what they learn. Next is focus on confidence building. By developing communicative competence and by gaining real world skills, the confidence can easily be built. Tasks are open ended. In learner centered approach, there is more than one possible answer. In it, the reality is not divorced from the real world situations and tasks are wider in focus. Next is high exposure. Students are encouraged to think critically and develop problem solving skills through creative tasks. Now, what is the role of teacher in learner centered approach? First one is observer and diagnostic of learner. The teacher diagnoses the strengths, weaknesses, learning needs and learning dispositions. This helps in shaping and provides appropriate learning environments and learning activities for the learners. Teacher is the provider of, of the environment for learning. The teacher provides conducive learning environment so that each learner would find enough scope and opportunity to fulfill her or his needs. The teacher is responsible to provide good physical environment, good mental environment and good social environment for conducive learning environment. Then teacher is facilitator of learning. This is more challenging than direct teaching as each teacher has a distinct learning style. Variations in learning dispositions support at the appropriate situations during their period of learning needs to be provided. Further, 
the teacher requires to encourage the learners to be engaged in learning activities whenever finds them inactive. If I cannot learn the way you teach, will you teach me the way I can learn? You can see. So, to answer this question, we are moving to learning centered approach. Learning centered approach advocates a student focused teaching and learning environment, facilitates the exploration of meaning and content knowledge through personal and interpersonal inquiry. This approach strives to be individualistic, flexible, competency based, varied in methodology and not always constrained by time or place. The teachers attempt to maximize student productivity, knowledge, acquisition, increasing skills and development of personal and professional abilities. Now let us have a look on different examples of learning centered educational practices. Collaborative group learning both inside and outside the classroom. Individual student inquiry and discovery. Enquiry and discovery by students and teachers together too. Problem based inquiry learning. Then synchronous interactive learning that is when both the instructor and the student come together at the same time hands-on experimental learning activities, on-site field experiences, self-paced performance on contextual tasks. Now what are the characteristics of learning centered educations? Let us have a look. First one is students construct knowledge through gathering and synthesizing information. Firstly, they gather the things, then they synthesize or intermix th that thing and create a new information integrating it with the general skills of inquiry, communication, critical thinking, problem solving and so on. Emphasis is on communicating knowledge effectively to address enduring and emerging issues and problems in real life contexts. In learning centered approach, the teacher's role is to coach and facilitate. The teacher and students evaluate learning together. Teaching and assessing are interwoven. Assessment is used to promote and diagnose learning. Emphasis is on generating better questions and learning from errors. Desired learning is assessed directly through papers, projects, performances, portfolios, etc. Now, let us compare the three approaches. First one is teacher centered approach then learner centered approach and learning centered approach. First of all, we will see nature of knowledge. In teacher centered approach, knowledge exists prior to the learner. In learner centered approach, knowledge is discovered by the learner, whereas in learning centered approach, knowledge is constructed by the learner. Role of teacher and learner in teacher centered approach is where teacher is active and learner is passive. But in learner centered approach, teacher makes learner active. And in learning centered approach, learner acts and teacher facilitates learning. What is the dominant teacher function in these three approaches? Let us have a look. In teacher centered approach, it is instruction or direction, whereas in student centered approach designing learning tasks and teaching in learning centered approach facilitating learning or supporting. Now which kind of control in these approaches? In teacher centered approach there are rigid and totalitarian types of rules teacher controls the whole situation whereas in learner centered approach teacher and learner share the control rather it is partially flexible and in learning centered approach it is dominantly learner controlled flexible and democratic. What kind of situation in the three approaches in teacher centered approach not situation specific but it has predecided syllabus predecided objectives here learner friendly and in learning centered approach natural and contextual to the learning. 
Now, what kind of inputs? In teacher centered approach, bits of facts and knowledge. In learner centered approach, competences and experiences. And in learning centered approach, techniques and strategies of learning. Methods and approaches used in all the three approaches. In teacher centered approach, mostly lecturing and demonstration means authoritarian kind of approaches are used. Whereas in learner based approach, play way and joyful methods are used where students learn by playing with a happy movement. And third one learning centered approach is it gives activity based platform. In curriculum, teacher centered approach the curriculum is prescribed already everything is decided and it is like airtight compartment. Then in learner centered approach it is developmental student and teacher both develop together and in learning centered approach it is emergent. Which kind of evolution let us see the difference in these three approaches. In teacher centered approach it is objective and we use summative. Whereas in learner centered approach it is activity based and it is formative in nature. In learning centered approach it is authentic assessment and self analytical. And in discipline we will talk about discipline in the three approaches. In teacher centered approach discipline is imposed by the fear of punishment or by any threatful gesture. Whereas in learner centered approach it is shared participatory both teacher and student share the feeling of discipline. And in learning centered approach self controlled nobody has to tell that you have to be in discipline. Today we discussed about teacher centered method, learner centered method and learning centered method. Teacher centered method includes many kind of methods like lecturing, demonstration, memorizing, reviewing, questioning, discussion, assignments and homework. Whereas learning centered method uh, is in it the student is important the whole focus is on student and it helps in gaining all the four levels of learning that is rote, understanding, application and correlation. Then we talked about learning centered method. In learning centered method the student focused teaching is done and a conducive learning environment is provided to the student. Learning centered method basically facilitates the exploration of meaning and content knowledge through personal and interpersonal enquiry. Now then we discussed about comparison among three approaches of education. We discussed about nature of knowledge of the three approaches, uh, role of teacher and learner, dominant teacher function, control, situation, inputs, methods and approach, curriculum, evaluation and discipline. And finally, to sum up, it can be said that all the three approaches are of paramount importance to keep the knowledge updated and alive. It depends upon the environment available that which approach is suitable, keeping in mind the level and stage of the learner. Finally, before leaving the class, I would like to give a message to all the students, save trees as the trees will save all of us. Thank you.